So we're going to continue where we left off last time with the Simple Stat Navigator app. And here we're going to separate the screens into individual components. So, hmm. so first we need to create the two files. We're going to create a folder called Screens. And in there, we're going to create a detail screen and a home screen. Let's start off with the home screen. Then now we will create the detail screen. These screens will just pretty much cut and paste the original code from the app.js. First, uh, we will set up the home screen. Remove the unnecessary imports. Let's format this properly. And then let's move over to the detail screen. And here in the detail screen, you can see that uh, it's pretty much the same as the home screen. Just going to copy it over, make the appropriate changes, remove the files that don't need to be there, and we should be good to go. All right, let's now let's import this home screen from the screens directory. And next, we will import the detail screen from the screen directory. Let's clean up some code that doesn't belong there anymore. Set these named properly and we should be, oh, let's add the additional imports that are necessary to get rid of some of these errors. We need to set the default export so that everything works properly. Let's set it in home screen also and Looks like we are good to go now with everything working like it was before. Now that everything's good, um, we need to add the flat list component to what we have going on here. So first let's add the flat list to our imports. Flat list is just a nice implementation to manage lists in your React Native application. Um, we will just put some dummy data in here associated as part of our state. We'll set a property called list data. We'll just use a couple of names. Um, we're using the key fields and ID field. The key field um, is needed to properly render the rows and manage change detection. Um, there's a more advanced way to have another field be the key field, but we will cover that in a later video. So we have our three users here. We've set our list data as part of state. This will be the data that we're going to load into the flat list. We're going to do some destructuring of the state object here to get list data. Um, and now we will start to create the flat list. Um, the flat list has a specific set of properties that we need to support here to make this work properly. First and foremost, we need the data that will get managed by the flat list. Next, we need to find the appropriate way to render each one of the items in the list. Uh, and that's by providing a function to the render item property on the flat list. Um, this property gets an item, which is the object passed in, and then also the index uh, for, it's a zero based index. And then what we need to do is we need to return the equivalent of a React component to render. We're going to wrap our component in a touchable opacity so that we can use the on press property on this to respond to an individual clicking on the list. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there we have our on press. We're going to create a local property called on, excuse me, called on item press. And we're going to pass that specific item that was clicked. For now, we're just going to console log out the item so that we're certain that everything is working properly. And now here at OnPress, one of the interesting things we need to do is we need to make sure we bind it to this, the specific component, so that we have the proper context inside the function. We need the proper context inside the onItemPress function because we'll be accessing this inside of the function also. As you can see now, as I'm clicking on the items, it's returning the specific item that was passed in. Let's try to do a little bit of styling of the list right now. So, first we'll start with trying to um, clean up the way this list looks. Let's put some padding around the 
main list here that we're going to create. And let's jump down to each list item actually. We're going to set the flex of one so that it takes the whole row. We're going to set the flex direction of row. So basically, what that means, we want each one of these fields below to go across each row. And then um, what we will do is after we set a little bit of padding around each one of the rows, specifically the bottom, so you get some space in there, uh, we're going to set the width of each one of the text components, which basically is a column, to account for how we want them to get spread across. We're basically going to do this with percentages. Um, and we'll just try some numbers and see what is the look that we get here. Let's just cut and paste this and then play around with the numbers for the percentages. We'll start with five. We'll put a 15% for the next one and 80% to take the whole thing out. Um, that doesn't look so bad. I think that's the list formatted. I think we're kind of good to go. Well, no, let's uh, put the title up here for the page. Let's increase the font size a little bit. How's that look? And that's so it's not too bad. Let's put some padding around it for some better styling. And I think maybe let's make it bold so it stands out a little bit more. 300, nope. Nope. Let's just go with simple bold and see what we get. Format it. And not so bad. When the user clicks a list item, we want that list item to be rendered on the next page. So we have the navigation property available to us since we were rendered using React Navigate. Um, so we specify the specific um, name of the screen we want to go to. Um, we specify the data we want to get passed to the screen. Um, next, let's go to the actual detail screen. And we will need to, once again, get that navigation property so that we know um, what's getting passed to us. But we're gonna we're gonna create a state property to actually hold the specific item that gets passed to us as a property. So um, we'll look on the props and we will pull off the uh, navigation property, which has a function that allows us to get parameters that are passed. So we can specify the name of the parameter. Um, that's getting passed from the home screen, which is called select row data, and that will return us the object that got passed. We will use that object to set the state on this page. So now we have our state property that has the value. Everything looks good. We set it to the current item. Okay. And then now we just, oh, it looks like, let's clean this up a little bit and use some destructuring to make this look a little bit cleaner here. So we'll just pull the navigation prop off of all the props. That fits in there better. Okay. Now, let's actually render the information off the object that got passed in. We're just gonna take the name of the list name of the object off the list item that got clicked, which is the current item name, and that should be good to go. All right, let's see what we get. Hmm, something's not working. What is not right? Let's go back and check here. Oh, well, first of all, it's detail, not detail screen. Okay, let's clean this up a bit. Okay. Uh, hmm. State that current name is an error. So let's go back to the detail page and see what's going on. Okay. Looks like I'm using the wrong name. That should be item, not current item. Okay, now everything seems to be working the way we wanted it to. 
and that is about it for this video. The future is written in code. Thank you and see you next time.